Welcome aboard. If you're on the submarine, you must be here to join the battle. It's always good to have new crewmates on the SS Winx Pony. Now normally, I would never step foot in a submarine. If there's one thing that absolutely terrifies me, it's the ocean. Specifically the idea of going underwater. But we have a war to win. The Anti-Lucy Club knows how much I hate the ocean, so they brought this fight underwater. If you see their ship at any point, be sure to hit it. How, you ask? Well, just ram into it with your mouse or something, I don't know. Straight ahead, Captain. So in our last video, we checked out some really old Spongebob games. Let's see how that went. It's the jellyfish! It's the jellyfish! Aha! It's the jellyfish! Can we lower the volume, please? Oh wow, I did it! I solved it! This guy moaned at least this loud. Ever since its creation in 1999, SpongeBob SquarePants has been receiving games on Nick.com. The early ones were kind of basic, but they started to become more complex as time went on. The transformation could be seen through the games by iTunes in 2001 and Jet City Studios in 2002. The ones by Jet City Studios stood out at the time because they were more colorful and lively than what we were used to seeing. Gotta hand it to the City of Jets for having a good development studio. But actually, Jet City is a nickname for Seattle. It gets its nickname because it does a lot of aircraft manufacturing. It goes by a lot of different names, actually. Seattle's known for a lot of things. But just like how it changed music forever just a decade prior, it also changed SpongeBob Flash games forever. Could there honestly be a higher honor? Jet City Studios was mostly known for their Hey Arnold games, but their other works were pretty good too. They're also known for their click a series. Let's check it out. Oh, that absolutely traumatized kids. But as far as SpongeBob games go, their works included games like Bikini Bottom or Bust. You had to fly through a chasm to reach Bikini Bottom on a Glove World balloon. There was also Squeaky Boot Blurbs, based on the episode Squeaky Boots. In it, you can make Spongebob say stuff with his boots. I love Harry Potter. This tastes like a pair my question. This tastes Okay, that's amusing. But if you ask me, the real highlight of Jet City Studios in the SpongeBob scene was bumper subs. You control a submarine and battle enemy ships by ramming into them. Kind of like bumper cars, but with your life on the line. Listen to the most war appropriate anthem they could have used for this. <laughs> You then choose a captain from one of five characters who are standing in tiny submarines that have been blown open. Looks like half of their bodies were blown off in the process too. But it's just a select screen, it doesn't need to have a logical design. The characters are Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, and Mr. Krabs. Some of them look really goofy through the perspectives you see them in. Check out Mr. Krabs. Why fear the monsters of the deep when you are the monster of the deep? Patrick also looks goofy, like a big pink blob. But as you can see, there's a lot going on on the screen. I may be wrong, but I think submarines tend to have just a few more controls than this. Though it may seem like there's a lot to keep up with, it's really simple. First of all, you might be inclined to focus on the big screen right in front of your face. You can actually just ignore it entirely. Your focus should be on the smaller radar up here in the corner. You watch it to see where the enemies are, then you move toward them by tilting to the left or the right. You can also flip a switch to make yourself move forward or backwards. There's also a speaker thing that dings when you hit a sub. It also warns you when a whale is spotted. Oh yeah, you have to avoid whales. If they catch up to you... I guess they like sub sandwiches. You also have to avoid jellyfish, which sting you and cause your ship to flood. You can keep going with some water in your vessel, but if it fully fills, you sink. As time goes by, the enemies get harder and harder to avoid. The radar will get really cluttered, and this is where you'll probably die. But it's all about getting a high score. Sometimes war requires sacrifice. 
It's not about surviving, it's about proving your cause. We have to take out as many of these enemy subs as we can. The ocean depends on it. And who do you think we're fighting against anyway? The other characters? Maybe every character from SpongeBob is in a different sub. This is the Bikini Bottom Subathon, probably taking place at Goo Lagoon. Are the whales in on it? They're sea creatures too. Or are they just eating people and disrupting our fight? <coughs> well, this puts a damper on the war. It's also interesting that the only obstacles are jellyfish and whales. The other submarines don't even try to fight back. What can I say? No one even wants to challenge me. I'm an expert at subbing. You gotta know when to run into them and when to reverse into them. You have to know when to proceed and when to flee. And if you see a whale, it's time to bail. That's what I always say. It's a good life philosophy, really gets you out of tight corners. This'll definitely prepare you to pilot a real submarine. Why explore the actual ocean when you can do it from here? But anyway, this game is a lot of fun and a good way to pass the time. Jet City Studios was a good development team and really made their mark in the history of cartoon Flash games. SpongeBob Flash games would continue to grow and get better with time, but it's always cool to see these relics of the past. But wait, we aren't finished just yet. Did you hit the enemy ship when it appeared like I asked you to? You didn't think our conversation at the start of the video would be relevant later on, did you? Well, if you followed instructions and hit the enemy ship, congratulations, you've unlocked the secret part of the video. If not, the video's over. You aren't seeing this right now. Why are you watching a black screen? But because this is the internet, I'm going to assume you're all being honest and only continuing to watch if you hit the enemy sub. So let's check out another game that came out in 2002. It's called Burger Bonanza, and this one has a twist. See, it was only ever released in Australia, so some of us may have missed it. I have a lot of friends who happen to be giant huntsman spiders, so they helped me access it. Now this is by far one of the strangest Spongebob Flash games I've ever played. Even stranger than Spongebob Krusty Krab in Run For The. Check out the menu screen. Now this is the ultimate design right here. Spongebob is even doing a little dance for us. They didn't have to go the extra mile and make him dance, but they did. The title screen also shows a pineapple that looks to be drawn in MS Paint. But the title here says Burger Bonanza rather than Pineapple Bonanza. But fear not, the Nickelodeon logo is, in fact, a burger. Now we're going in with the right mindset. Let's check out these instructions. Ah! I think I just went deaf in my left ear. It's okay, I have another one. So check out the rules. SpongeBob SquarePants has to collect all the pieces of the hamburger. Why'd they capitalize the? Move SpongeBob from left to right. Why such a big pause? The pieces of the burger. Again, why must they emphasize the word the so much? If you catch a piece of food in the wrong order, SpongeBob will get zapped. By what? Why are the stakes so high for making a sandwich? I mean, I guess it isn't just any ordinary sandwich. It is the burger after all. The gods will smite you with lightning if you dare miscook the burger. Also, shortly after it starts, the music just stops playing for no reason and doesn't continue. Strange decision. But now here's the game. Sandwich ingredients are falling and you have to move Spongebob to catch them in your bowl. If it looks like you have to be extremely specific in order to catch something, that's because you do. It's easy to miss something even when you're sure you've caught it. And even though the tomato and cheese are right next to each other, you have to catch the cheese first or you take damage. The bacon and onions also look very similar, so it's easy to go for one of those instead of the other. And as for the shock you're supposed to incur, all that really happens is a lightning bolt appears in the upper corner. You lose once three bolts appear, but it takes less than a minute to win. Then it says, here is... the burger you built. I hope he isn't planning on eating that with the whole pineapple in there. Usually they're sliced before being put in sandwiches. But silly as this game is, there's always charm to be had in these really old, kinda crude creations. They can really put a smile on your face. But that covers everything I wanted to say here. I hope you enjoyed this trip back to the early 2000s, and check out our last video if you want to see a few that came out even before this. I'm always happy to take this dive through Flash game history to see where our favorite sponge got his start. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.